Hello everyone, I'm trying to get this Wi-Fi to work, so I don't know whether it's working today. There you go. Hi everyone, I'm here to enjoy a discussion with you and speak to you more about concepts from my book, A Radical Awakening, which has been out in the world now for three weeks. If you started reading it, tell me what is your aha moment? What are your insights? What is impacting you? This book is now reaching the hearts and minds of many. So I am holding a book, book club almost on a daily basis. This is book club number four. Let's talk about some things that come up as a consistent theme in this book that I want to share with you. So drag lifestyle MD, can't put it down. How many of you have started reading the book? G. G. Russell just got it. Tanya Pettis, hi. Salistara, what? Hi. Nicole, waiting for your book to come. Please be my therapist. Amazing book, has been life-changing. We are here, book club number four. I'm going to share with you some of the themes from this book, A Radical Awakening. Grab it. It is helping women and men transform, understand themselves more deeply, and truly set themselves free. So if you haven't grabbed the book, grab it. So one of the things I talk about in this book a lot, and what I see on a daily basis with my clients, is this pervasive sense of lack. What is lack, right? So we know lack is something lesser than. Lack is something scarce. Lack is not good enough. Now it seems so obvious that our problems would come from lack. But what I really want to talk about today is that you may not even realize how quickly you go, you go into lack. So Jassian says, maybe I'll buy the audiobook. I hope you do. It's only 15 hours. It's intense, but it will keep you company on your exercise and your cooking and your walks and before you go to bed. So whether you buy the audio or a hard copy, make sure to grab a copy either way. So what is lack? Lack according to me and what I see in hundreds of people I work with every year. Lack is the default, is the default gear that we go into. I promise you, it is your default gear. What does that mean? Anytime you are in a state of uh, a trigger, a triggered state, anytime you are in a state of heightened emotion, when somebody has poked you, chances are, for the most part, <clears throat> that you will shift your emotional gear shift into gear called lack. Gear number one, lack. Gear number two, more lack. More stories. Gear number three, shame or anger. Gear number four, spiral. Pattern. Acting out, addiction. We go through a very predictable path in our minds. And I talk about it in my book, A Radical Awakening, in many different ways. How we women in particular are conditioned to enter lack. And it isn't too late to change no matter how old you are. So, lack is the Gear shift number one of our emotional inner pump in our engine. Our internal engine has an emotional template and gear number one is lack. Gear number two, more lack, more scarcity. And then judgment, then shame, and then anger. Either we take the anger out inside or anger out inside ourselves or outside. And then we spiral into a pattern. As a therapist, I promise you, it's standard protocol. Standard protocol that when a client is triggered, gear number one is some sort of lack. Now, what does lack really look like? 
Lack looks like, oh my goodness, this is not a good thing. First thing is a decision we make that this is not good. Whatever this is, not good. Then we quickly, quickly, and these are happening in infinitesimal seconds, nano moments. And so once we decide this is not good, then we become a little bit more detailed. Either I'm not good or that he or she or that outside is not good, right? We have to point the finger. Now there's judgment. Now there's blame, right? This is what we do as children. Who stole the cookie from the cookie jar? Not me. She did, right? We learned this, right? So we learned lack. And then we learn more lack and judgment. Now we point fingers. So if you're a woman, you will typically point it at yourself in some way. Like, oh, poor me. It's always me. Everybody thinks I'm stupid. Everybody thinks I'm this. It's always we do this to ourselves. We are the classic victim martyrs, right? We blame ourselves. If we're a guy, we blame outside. You freaking bloody bastard or whatever, right? Road rage. Have you seen road rage? It's typically by guys. Women will curse and just keep eating their bag of chips in their car and yell at their kid maybe. But guys will roll down the window and screech next to the other car to express their outrage. That is the difference between masculine aggression and feminine depression, right? The feminine energy is depression, to go inside. Masculine energy is typically to go aggressive, outside. And of course, depending on the degree of toxicity, we go fully inside to annihilate ourselves or we go fully outside to excoriate and annihilate the other. So why is this so important, guys? Because this is happening all the time inside you and you don't even know it. It's happening instantaneously. You know, now maybe I can observe myself, but I definitely can observe all my clients, right? It's always easier to observe somebody outside. I see, like somebody will say, oh, it's raining, okay? It's raining. Neutral energy, it's raining. Depending on whether we're in a traffic jam or if we're getting late or not, or if we have packages outside our house or not, or if we're cozy at home and eating popcorn, depending on our vantage, we will now have a story about the rain. Gear number one typically will be if we are in a situation that is emotional, we will suddenly have a lack based story around the rain. Oh, it's not good. It's not good. And then we'll start the emotional gear shift to gear number two, gear number three, gear number four, and we spiral. Oh my goodness, now I'm going to be late, and then he's going to be angry with me, then I won't have dinner, then da -da 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 -da. and then tomorrow this will happen, and then my boss will be angry. And we go into an insane rant in our head because once you go into gear shift one lack, it's a slippery slope. So what is mindfulness? <clears throat> mindfulness is the capacity to mind your mind and be fully present to whatever is coming up. Mindful. Observe your mind fully. So when you're mindful, you can begin to see these patterns inside. Oh, it was raining and I couldn't just stay with the isness of the rain. I needed to Put gear shift number one, gear two, gear three, gear four. And now suddenly I have a movie in my head that has nothing to do with the rain. But I've decided it does. And I've created a whole emotional energy around the rain. Now we don't see ourselves doing this, you see, because it's just the way we are. We don't realize that we are shifting the gears in our emotional engine at all times. And this is why typically in my book, A Radical Awakening, I call it being asleep 
Now, people don't like to be told that they're asleep. They're like, I'm not asleep, I'm awake. They don't understand it's a term, being asleep, which is used when one is asleep to one's own emotional inner engine. Get the book. I speak about this all through the book. How women especially are brainwashed into lack-based belief systems of internal depression, of lack. So why is this so important, you guys? Because we don't realize we're doing it all the time. All the time. So no wonder our bodies are diseased. No wonder we're eating out of control and drinking out of control. No wonder. Because who wants to live with this internal lack? But because we're asleep to how we are shifting the gears, all the time we're shifting the gears, we don't realize we're doing it. We're asleep to this internal maneuvering. We're unconscious to it. Like zombies, we are not aware. We think it's the rain. We think it's the neighbor. We think it's the tadpoles. We think it's the, the traffic jam. We don't realize it is our internal gear shift in our emotional engines that is causing the freaking problem. And lack is the ubiquitous first gear default. I've rarely met people who when there's a tornado in their life, they're able to A, be neutral, and B, wait and see where things go. When I was young and restless and naive, I too was only in emotional gear, one, two, three, four, lack, lack, judgment, 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 scarcity, anxiety. Only when I began to understand that there is such a thing as reality as it is and that I didn't need to do a thing with my mind against or for reality as it is that I began to awaken. It was an epiphany for me. My epiphany occurred when I was 21 years old and I really started to meditate and it hit me as it does when you meditate, just saying that, oh my goodness, reality is not asking me to react in such a way. Reality is not saying be pissed now, get angry now, get depressed. Reality is just the isness of the moment. I am bloody interpreting reality with my cultural stories and my shame that I got from culture and all my injunctions and judgments and moral righteousness. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And, and, and when you realize that, which many of you already probably have realized, but it is the spiritual breakthrough. It is the, the switch. And until you don't make the switch, you don't get to transform. Until you begin to see that your mind is its own movie, separate from reality. And you have a choice whether you put your movie onto reality or not. Understanding that choice is freedom. Until you get that, you will be encrusted, encaged, and enslaved to your own past conditioning. You will not be in the present moment. So my book of Radical Awakening is a spiritual and psychological metamorphosis for every woman, it's mostly written for women, who wish to truly, truly understand who it is they are and finally and unequivocally and fully begin to break free. It is a deep book. It doesn't stay on the surface. It penetrates who it is you are how you came to be the way you are and how you can begin to shift out of your robotic patterns. If you have read any of my books on parenting, 
you know that I don't spare any punches, that I truly try to take parents to the depth of their madness in a loving way, to show them how they are blocking their own freedom. And yes, those neural pathways are hard to change. But moment by moment by moment, the adult self can undo and redo those pathways. But it takes an awakening. So the awakening occurs when you begin to realize that you have predominantly been living in gear of lack, in the emotional gear of lack, gear shift lack, gear shift one lack, gear shift two lack, three judgment, four depression or aggression, five dis the spiral of unending anxiety. It comes from gear shift number one. And until you understand that lack is a conditioned part of you, it doesn't have to be your reality. It is a conditioned part of you. You can begin to change your entire way of living. Before you enter lack, you can say, hmm, I don't know. I'm going to just sit with the isness of this moment before I enter lack. So suppose you're sitting in the house and your roof falls down because of tremendous rain and bad construction. Before you enter lack, sit in the possibility that you don't know. And it is just what it is. The roof has fallen down. Very few of us can do that because when the roof falls down, we are like, that is a bad thing. And I therefore need to react as if it's a bad thing. Therefore, I need to get angry or really start crying. Because if I don't react as if it's a bad thing, then I'm crazy. But you only need to react if you think it's a bad thing. What if it's just a thing? What if you're about to get a brand new roof for free? Because the insurance gives it to you for free. What if you were meant to move that from that house anyway? What if, what if, what if, what if? You don't know. So in that moment, to stay suspended in the I don't know, and this is just what it is, takes tremendous power. Because we've been told how to react. We've been told who to react to and how to react by all the people around us. We've been controlled. We've not had self-ownership because we've been owned by other people in their ship. We've been in other people's ship, not in our own. So how do we sit in the isness and not go to the first emotional gear of lack? When we are not in lack, we are able to stay steady and not be swayed by every moment of our life. To understand that this life is a long arc. It's not lived just through this reaction. There are going to be many more stories. There are going to be many more twists and turns. This is not the end of the road. So because it's not the end of the road and because we don't know how it could turn out, we got to wait. But because we enter into lack, because we enter into lack, we don't realize how that lack now sets up a domino effect of more lack. So if you truly loved yourself, you would actually just stay with the isness because when you enter lack, it begets more lack. Then you only see lack. Now you need to back up your lack with all sorts of depression. Now you need to communicate that to your friends. Now they will see lack in you and the story goes on. So to be mindful means to be full of presence in the moment. It needs to be exactly where reality is right now, which is right here, right now. So the greatest act of self-love is to learn about your emotional gear shifts. And I talk about it in different ways all through this book. And we women especially have been plummeted 
pillaged, marauded, decimated, and every other SAT word for pummeled with messages around lack. We've been told from head to toe how the perfect image needs to be. From our hair, to our eyebrows, to our, eye, to our eyelashes, to our nose, to our cheek, cheekbones, to what's in the brain, to how the brain is, to the mouth, to what comes out of the mouth, to the chest, to the, I don't have to go on. Every inch of us has been stacked up against an ideal. More than men have had to deal with. So we are stacked up with lack. And that's why we women stay silent. That's why we don't yet take the entire earth by the helm and heal it. Because we're afraid. Because we've been conditioned to be at the back. So it is time for women not to be first, but to step up more. It's time for us to heal the shit show that has been created by the toxic patriarchy. Men cannot heal the way we can because our bodies are meant to nurture and heal. And we, through our redemption, through our raising, through our radiance, will heal our brothers. They have lost their way. It is apparent. They have lost their way. They can't even find their way on earth, but they're going to the moon and to Mars and who knows where else and to the bottom of the ocean. They've really lost their, their mind and their way. But that's their problem. We don't begrudge them. We look at ourselves. What can we do to step into our power, our heart, our sense of sovereignty? Because the more we tap into our true mothering principle, whether we are mothers or not, our mothering principle, we will begin to heal the world. But in order to enter our mothering principle, we have to enter the mothering principle for ourselves. And that is truly what a radical awakening is about. For me, even though I love children, and I think my parenting books are lovely and have helped many, this book, for me is the key because when the mother, when the woman is disconnected, all will be disconnected. She holds the key. The woman holds the key. We don't call Mother Earth mother for nothing. It means the mothering principle within us and men hold it too, but we hold it in plenitude, in abundance. When we are disconnected, our children fall astray. So the power lies in our radical awakening. So that is what this book is a call to. It's a promise toward, it's an aspiration for. It is deeply personal to me. I've shared my personal story as much as I felt comfortable with, as vulnerable as, as I could be to share my foibles, my fallacies, my limitations, my own shame, my own fears. Because I believe when one woman shares her story with abandon, with courage, with truth, with transparency, she sets forth the capacity for others to do so as well. Because part of our silence is because we've been shamed. And if you take out the stigma of shame, we won't be muffled and muzzled anymore. We will be free to express. And at first our expression may be maybe primitive or maybe raunchy or maybe raspy and not so clear. But as we practice, as we practice expression, we begin to become the healers that we are. So a radical awakening is this homage to women to honor their inner power, to enter their inner sovereignty, to trust their inner knowing. We are powerhouses. We have forgotten that we are. I lived for the first half of my life knowing I had it within me, but I couldn't access it the way I do now. I had blocks, blocks of shame, blocks of fear, blocks of need, blocks of uh, uh, ideations around being abandoned or rejected. And until I let those go, I would not be fully empowered as I am today. 
So this book is a pathway for you if you're a woman out there sitting there going, you know, I haven't yet fully lived my full self. I haven't yet fully expressed my authentic truth. I haven't fully gotten out of this hesitation, this confusion, this fog. I haven't. And it is time for me to do so. Then this is the book for you. So get your book, A Radical Awakening. Thank you for joining me uh, in my book club number four. And I'll be back when I'll be back. So today I focused on the gear shifts of inner lack and how we need to embrace the isness of the moment in order to not spiral into dysfunction. You are in charge of where your inner gear goes. You are the driver behind the wheel. The car goes, the ship goes where you ask it to go. Life is what it is, but your inner gear shift response to life is where your power lies. If you begin to notice that you respond mostly from lack, the first step is awareness. Oh, lack. Mm, again, lack. Again, this was something bad. This was something wrong. He was wrong. I was wrong. Always lack. And when you become aware of lack, only then can we begin to change the pattern. And I will lead you through how we can do this step by step through these book clubs. So if you're interested, set your notification to receive the alert when I go live, but it will be on my pages anyway. Thank you for joining me. I'll be back with book club number five when I'm back. Thank you guys.